So you know that thing that everyone compliments you on, that thing that they say that you're really, really good at, whether it's a personality trait or a characteristic, or maybe it's just something that you can put on your resume. And you say, yep, yep, that's, that's me. But deep down, deep down, something doesn't feel quite right. Something feels a little bit off about this compliment because you don't 100% either feel comfortable with it or feel that that's you. And what that may be for you is a trauma response because trauma responses often have this way of disguising themselves as something that's really, really beneficial to us and really, really beneficial and positive about us. Welcome back my friends. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Lacey Jane and I make videos here on YouTube that are spirituality and mental health based because I for a very very long time struggled with my mental health and spirituality really helped get me out of that and find my worth again and that is my goal for you is for you to find your worth. Now today I am talking about how your trauma responses can often disguise themselves and show up in a lot of different ways and very small ways at that that you may not recognize and oftentimes there are qualities that may disguise themselves as something really really positive or even something that people often compliment us on oftentimes this trauma response is deeply rooted from a place that it was fight or flight this was often a character trait or a personality trait that we had to adapt in our lives to help us become safe and feel safe. And today I'm going to give you a little bit of a story of how I came to recognize a trauma response that came up for me the other day. But first I wanted to go ahead and just give you a little example before I share my story just so that you can see another perspective and another viewpoint as to how like this trauma response may show up in your life. The first one that I'm going to share with you is going to be performative Nancy. We're going to just talk about performative Nancy for a second and her trauma response. So performative Nancy is, you know, she's the most outgoing person in the room. She is very, very fun. She's super funny. She makes a lot of jokes. She often makes people laugh. She's the friend in the group that you always want to call for a good time because you know that when performative Nancy is there, you're going to have a good time. You're going to have fun. Now, performative Nancy loves, she loves being funny. She loves being charismatic. That is an awesome personality for, trait for her to have. But the thing about performative Nancy is that when she goes home and she closes the door, and she's quiet, and she's alone, and she's by herself, she's no longer performing. When we're by ourselves, we're not performing. We, I mean, we, we could talk to ourselves. I talk to myself all the time, but we're no longer, you know, cracking jokes alone in our own room. So performative Nancy goes home, and she replays everything that happened that night. She replays the people that she talked to. She thinks about if she came off as likable. She came thinks about if she came off as charismatic. She came home and she really did a lot of reflecting and digesting. Performative Nancy has wounds that cause her to be so performative and cause her to be so charismatic. She has wounds that either stem from feeling very neglected as a child and not necessarily getting the attention that she desired or felt that she deserved. So as she grew up, she felt the need to perform and she felt the need to be the center of attention. Maybe she didn't get a whole lot of attention growing up. And so this is her way of trying to fulfill that void that's deeply rooted within her. That's very, very empty because while she was never shown that love and she was never shown that attention and she continued to have this void within her. And so she searched in part she searched in friendships, she searched in crowds to show up and be this person that was getting the attention so that she could feel that love, so that she could feel safe. And so how this actually can be recognized as a trauma response is because when she goes home and she closes that door, she's actually very exhausted. She doesn't feel like herself. She feels like her energy has been drained. She feels like she just had to constantly put on a show. She's tired. Uh, she doesn't feel like she has the room and the energy to get home and like do things that she loves and take care of herself. She's getting home and she's reflecting and she's just drained. And so you see, as this can be a very positive attribute, like, yeah, she's, she's great with people. She could be a, she could be a comedian or a speaker or, or something along those lines. She could have a podcast, who knows? She could go places. Nancy's great. So that's when this positive attribute is, yes, this is a great thing to have, but when it's rooted from a place of pain, 
it really takes away from all of the positivity because it's exhausting having to perform in that way. So my story is much more simple and small. This was something that actually happened, you know, just a day-to-day -day thing as a lot of our triggers do happen. They come up when we least expect day-to-day -to -day things. So the other day, my boyfriend was like, hey, can you cut an onion for me? And I was like, yeah, sure, I can do that except <laughs> I didn't react in that way. I didn't react internally or externally. Well, I guess I did kind of externally. You know, I was cool. I was cool. I was, I was pretty cool. On the inside, when he said cut that onion, I was like running to get this onion, running to get this knife, running to get this cutting board. I was immediately like, okay, I got to get this onion. I'm going to cut it so fast. I'm going to cut it so great. It's going to be great. I'm going to cut this. I'm cutting this onion. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm cutting this onion. And it wasn't until... He was looking at me and he was like, you know, you can slow down, right? <laughs> and that's when I realized that I was actually physically shaking. That's also when I realized that this was actually a trauma response. So when I walked away and I was like done cutting the onion, I sat down and I was like, wow, that definitely was a trauma response that I thought I had healed, that I thought I was past. And without going into a whole lot of detail, I in the past have found myself in a lot of situations with people, environments, just in general scenarios where I had to act really, really fast. I had to move fast. I had to do things quickly. And there was a very high expectation put upon me to just perform well under pressure. And I noticed that that showed up in this little small day-to-day -day action of cutting an onion, but it showed up in my past as me constantly manifesting scenarios and situations where that showed up for me. I constantly, like I will tell you right now, in the past seven years, this specific trauma response has shown up in almost every single job I have ever worked. I have constantly worked jobs where I would have to show up and I would get no formal training, I would be incredibly stressed out and put under pressure and be asked to perform with perfection under time. Why am I constantly manifesting these jobs where I have to constantly perform and perform well and, and constantly, and if I don't perform well under pressure and I don't learn to be really adaptable to my environment, then I would get either reprimanded or like, why, why aren't you doing it good enough? Why aren't you fast enough? Why aren't you at 100% even though I didn't train you or even though I'm expecting you to perform perfectly under pressure? And granted, this was a trauma response that I wholeheartedly embraced because everyone told me, you know, this is a great thing about you, Lacey. You can perform well. You can figure things out. Nobody has to teach you or explain anything to you. You can just do it and you can just do it fast. And that's something that I was like, yeah, I, yeah, yes. Over time, I've realized like this is actually not that great of a thing to have. This is, I don't actually love being like this. And so in that moment when I, you know, came back from cutting that onion, I thought and I was like, wow, I really actually need to shift this. So the way that I chose to shift this is I needed to really recognize that, yes, this is a positive trait. It's great that I can learn fast. It's great that I can work under pressure. But listen to me very, very closely. When it comes to your trait, because this is what I ask myself, is this a trait that I want to continue if it costs me my peace? Is this a trait that I want to continue to embody if it costs me my peace? Is this a personality or character trait that I am comfortable with accepting, that I am rewarding myself for having by beating up my nervous system? Because then it's not a reward. Then it doesn't become a good character trait. Then it doesn't become something positive that you truly actually want to embody. I have shown you some examples and, and told you how, you know, positive traits can show up in our lives and disguise themselves. But I want you right now to start thinking of something that other people may praise you for, something that, you know, they may compliment you on, something that you have that you do really well that doesn't quite sit well with you. And if you can't quite think of anything just yet, I'm going to tell you right now, it will come up if you just ask the universe. Just ask the universe, say, Spirit, will you show me this thing that needs healing within me? Show me this characteristic trait. Show me this whatever it is that needs to be healed. 
because I promise you, if you ask for it, the universe will deliver and the universe will start showing it to you. And the ways that the universe delivers it to you and shows it to you is through uh, personal, you know, situations, personal conversations with people. This is often, um, it'll come up in overhearing other people's conversations, whether you're at the grocery store, uh, whether you're at work, anything like that, it'll come up on social media, it'll come up on TV or movies that you watch. Anything that you consume, content you consume, you will start to hear it everywhere and spirit will constantly like put it in your path so that you can recognize it and so that you can, you know, because once you've asked for it, it's, it's gonna happen, it's gonna come to you. Then, whatever this is, whatever this trait is, whatever is coming up for you, this is going to be universal for everyone. You can tell yourself right then and there, I am safe. I am safe right now. I am safe where I am. I'm safe. That's universal for any trigger that comes up. Remind yourself of your safety first and foremost. You're going to recognize that there are positive attributes to having this trait. There are positive attributes to this trait that you have, but you are no longer going to embody this trait, this characteristic. You're no longer putting it on your resume with the intention of pain behind it. You are no longer embodying this trait if it's going to have the intention of pain. Because let's go back to performative Nancy for a second. It's awesome that she's charismatic. It's awesome that she's the life of the party. But, you know, some days, some days she doesn't even want to talk and it's still safe for her to go to the party. Some days she doesn't want to show up and make jokes, but it's still safe for her to be herself. It's okay. It's okay for her to embody every single aspect of her because she's a multi-dimensional being and it's okay for her to show up in any capacity. Me and my story, yeah, it's great that I can work well under pressure and I can work fast and I can pick things up easily, but I don't have to. It's safe for me not to have to. It's safe for me to get the help that I need. It's safe for me to go slow. So take these traits and remind yourself how safe it is for you to show up in any capacity. Now, I want you to take these questions that I've given you and just kind of marinate on them. And I hope that spirit is going to send you some really clear signs and that you're able to pick them up with clarity. And that also, not only are you able to pick them up with clarity, you're able to give yourself grace because I know that when the triggers come up in the moment, it's going to be really hard, especially if you think that you're healed or, you know, you've felt pretty good about this up until now. It's going to be hard at first because it's new and you're fighting something that you also have a push and pull against because, you know, while this is a great attribute, you're fighting against it because you're like, this actually doesn't feel 100%. Like, I don't 100% feel great like myself. And that's okay. So give yourself grace there. And now if you resonated with anything, if you felt compelled to share anything or you want to just share something that came up for you, something that came to your mind, or maybe how spirit is talking to you as of lately, feel free to comment something below in the comments. I would super, super appreciate it because I love reading comments because they often just give me ideas. They also give me a little bit of clarity. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel because it would really uh, support me and I would really appreciate it. I also want to send you so, so much love. And I want to tell you right now, stop what you're doing and just remember that anything that you desire, you are worthy of. Thank you so much for being here today and I will see you again soon. Bye.